Hey everybody, welcome back to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. That's the show where you ask me a filmmaking question and I try to answer it. I know we've been gone for a couple of weeks, but we're back now, hopefully to get back on track as I regain my footing and start producing videos on a more consistent basis. Typically, if I'm behind on my normal weekly video, this is the video that gets jettisoned. But we're back along with some updates. But remember, if you'd like your question answered on the show, you know where to write me, thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That's your best chance of having your question read on the show. Or you can comment below, or you can leave me a message on Twitter at Frugal Filmmaker. One of the things that's changed recently is I've actually purchased a new camera. This is it, this is the Sony a7 II, and I'd sort of been talking about getting this camera for a while because of some major benefits that had really interested me in this camera. Uh, the first one was that five axis stabilized sensor that's inside of this camera body. That's just what I bought the camera body. I didn't buy any lenses with it because I have a lot of vintage lenses, a lot of Minolta lenses. But a problem I had with my Sony NEX camera that I'm actually using to shoot this right now is stability in the image because none of my vintage lenses, of course, have uh, in lens stabilization because they are old manual lenses. And so when I heard that Sony was developing a five axis stabilizer that would allow you to use any kind of lens with this camera and render a stabilized image, I was of course very interested. Not that this is anything super brand new, these type of uh, stabilizers have been around for a couple of years, but of course I couldn't get my hands on one because of the price. Uh, but this I found was the best deal. This body was $1,700, which isn't cheap I realize, but it is frugal because I think that this camera embodies a lot of value for that price. Now of course, I just noticed the price dropped $200. Of course, that's after I bought it. Uh, and I need this camera on a shoot that I was gonna actually shoot some interviews with. And I didn't wanna use my camcorder, which is kind of my go-to for event shooting, but I didn't, I don't really like the camcorder look. I'm trying to go for a more cinematic look for these interviews because they're supposed to apparently go somewhere pretty important. So I want them to look really good. So I prefer a more cinematic look for these interviews. And this camera will shoot for 30 minutes with, before shutting off. So I figured that is enough to get me some good interview, or at least I know that it's going to hit 30 minutes and turn off, so I can expect that. With my uh, 5N, one of the things I've been frustrated with is that it unpredictably now will just turn off. It used to go for 20 minutes or so before it would overheat, and now it can go from two to 20 minutes and shut off, and I never know when it's gonna shut down, and so that's been a really frustrating with this camera that seemed to develop fairly recently, but I still use it for video blogging, and I think that's a good use for it, and I will still use it because I like Sony's cameras. But this camera has a lot of interesting features that I'm excited about using, not just the five axis stabilizer, but also the full frame sensor, which will allow me to get the full focal length out of my uh, lenses that I put on it, namely uh, wide angle lenses. So when I put a 20 millimeter lens on here, I'm gonna get a 20 millimeter shot. I'm not gonna get a 35 millimeter shot, which is what the NEX 5N would crop to, which is pretty good for an APS-C sensor but this allows me to get the full focal length out of every lens I stick on it, which is awesome. Something I'm really excited about. This also has a mic input, which I am excited about using preamps with so they won't have to sync and post as much. I also have some reviews of some products that use that mic input as a preamp. I also have some videos coming up that will exclusively use this camera. Not really reviews because I think that this camera has been reviewed ad nauseum. I think everybody knows uh, the ins and outs of this camera. If not, you can look up a real camera review site like DP Review or something like that, and that will really go into this camera. Although I, of course, will share my insights as I use it. Uh, but one thing I really wanna make a video for is using the a7 II inside of the frugal cage and see how well it works in that and how well it adapts. Because if I wanna get a cage for this camera uh, that's made for this camera, I'm gonna be spending $150, $200 or I can get a generic cage for $50. But I still like the frugal cage and I think it's sturdy and tough and will work well with this camera. And so I'm interested in putting it in there and seeing how well it works and then sharing that video with you. So look for that in the near future. Okay, onto our questions. The first one is a uh, email from Bill Moore who says, I know you prefer prime lenses and pulling focus. Are there situations where you feel that using a zoom lens and or autofocus is appropriate? It seems like when camcorders first came out, it was a big deal that you could smoothly zoom in and out with a touch of a button. When I use my DSLR or any X5N, zooming in is anything but smooth. Is it better to just film a scene at a specific focal length and use jump cuts to close-ups or wide shots? This is a great question, Bill. There's a lot of information in there you're requesting. Uh, and my personal feeling is, of course, is that this is really completely open to interpretation. I mean, I agree that zooming on a camcorder is really, really nice. And it's so much smoother than on a DSLR or camera like that where zooms really are not provided for like they were in uh, ENG style cameras, old new electronic news gathering cameras for news or camcorders where those rocker zooms are just in everything and they're always smooth. And if you want something like that, you're gonna have to go for a camcorder or wait until somebody comes up with a way 
to drive manual lenses with some kind of servo motor. This is affordable because I'm definitely not going to buy it before that. Um, but that being said, I don't think there is, you know, clear cut situations where you should say, well, I'm never going to zoom or I'm only going to move the camera because those things can be used effectively in both ways. If you think, you know, modern filmmakers never use zooms anymore. Well, look at Quentin Tarantino. I mean, he zooms all the time. Uh, there's, of course, the vertigo shot, you know, where you have a compression zoom, where you change your focal length with a zoom as you dolly in to create that shot in vertigo and jaws and uh, Goodfellas and where it's been used uh, quite effectively. So it can be effective. There's nothing wrong with using autofocus if it's used appropriately, opposed from pulling focus. I think the trick is, is that you just can't let it look like it's autofocusing. I know some of these modern cameras can actually track objects within the focal plane and focus on them if you tell them to, and it looks like you're pulling focus. So if you can get away with that, I think it's great. I just think you shouldn't use autofocus when it's constantly searching and going back and forth because that looks terrible and just looks like you're an amateur and you don't want that. So if you can pull off the effect that you're using, that you're pulling focus, I say use it. But if it looks cheap, don't use it, which is probably a good rule to apply in any aspect of filmmaking. Okay, up next is Alex Dupre who says, I was wondering what camera I should get. I've been using our family's camcorder and I want to upgrade. I have some, some experience with the DSLRs. Also, I want to improve my audio. What did you use on collection day? Now I've had this question before, what camera should I get? And I'm not really gonna dwell on answering what specific camera you should get, Alex, because you've been using a camera, you're using a camcorder. That's a full featured, very capable camera of shooting whatever you want. Um, but one thing I always like to fall back on is what exactly, what kind of look are you going for? Because if you use a DSLR and you think like a cinematographer, one thing you want to have access to is interchangeable lenses because different focal lengths can give you different effects. And primes tend to look a little sharper than a zoom lens, but not always. Also, DSLRs tend to look more cinematic because you're shooting at 24 frames, which you can shoot with a camcorder, but I've just noticed that camcorders tend to look more electronic and DSLRs tend to look more cinematic, but that just might be my interpretation or my, my perspective. I like the ability to change lenses. I think you can add a lot of variety when you're doing things like lens flares and just sharper focal lengths and things like that. Of course, you can change the focal length on a zoom lens as well. You just don't have to show that you're zooming if you don't want to. You could always just zoom to a tighter or looser focal length and have that focal length. Um, but I like the ability to be able to put different lenses on my camera because I'm kind of a lens nerd and even though it's kind of an expensive hobby, I don't have a lot of lenses, but I like to find new and interesting lenses and be able to try them out. And you can't try them out on a camera that you can't adapt lenses to. You can't adapt lenses like old still camera lenses onto a camcorder, but you can onto a DSLR. Specifically, mirrorless cameras tend to be the best to adapt these old lenses to, which is why I like the Sony line. As far as what I use for audio on collection day, it was a Marantz digital audio recorder. I don't remember the model number specifically because it was provided by the school that I attended. So I didn't have to rent it or go get my own or use my Zoom H1 even though I had it at the time. But the Marantz was an XLR recorder, it was durable. Um, I had no problems. My audio people didn't have any problems with it as long as it wasn't dropped or something. It tended to eat batteries pretty heavily though because it had an LED display that was brightly lit. So that sucked batteries. Uh, which is one thing I like about the Zoom H1 is it doesn't drain batteries that fast and it only uses one AA opposed to four AA's. So, but that's the uh, equipment that I had access to. So that's what I used, of course. That's what you tend to do. All right, on to Twitter, we have a question from Tristan Bowersox who said, you mentioned an SD monitor in creating a small studio part three. Do you have a link for that or at least a model name? Well, this is the monitor that I've been using for a long time, my SD monitor. This is a Kobe TFT V791. But a lot of these SD monitors are exactly the same. They're just rebranded and their buttons might look different, but you can tell they're the exact same monitor. And I don't have a link for this because this was actually picked up on some kind of a clearance sale that my wife found, or you entered into a contest where you were supposed to win a big screen monitor. And when you did that, you were able to buy these for $10. Oh, I actually don't use this monitor anymore. I was using it upside down, if you remember in that video, uh, because I was using it to as a monitor for my camcorder that I've been shooting my tabletop stuff with. But this has since been retired. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it now. I have a whole different system for shooting things on the tabletop and monitoring those things, which I'm going to explain in a video uh, coming up in the near future. If you really want one of these monitors, you can do a search on Amazon or eBay for 7-inch SD monitors, and you'll definitely find a slew of these probably at cheap prices because people will be wanting to get rid of these if they're SD, I suppose. But they aren't that much less expensive then something like this, which is my cheap HDMI monitor for $56 that I wrote about a long time ago, made a video about it, about how I've been using this as kind of my field monitor, and I'm still using it, and I, I think it's pretty good for the money. So I'd recommend if you're interested in a high-def monitor, 
instead of having to plug your camera into a standard def monitor or high def camera, you know, to downscale in a standard def, just plug it into this HDMI monitor and you will get a much sharper picture, which will allow you to see, you know, color and sharpness and everything else much more clearly. And this will infinitely be more useful, in my opinion, than an old SD monitor. But if you're looking specifically for standard definition, you know, use uh, Amazon and eBay and you'll probably be able to dig some up, some good deals up, especially eBay. Okay, on to YouTube comments, we have one from Blueout23 who says, what computer do you have? I see a laptop, just wondering. And I've had several people ask me what computer I use and you don't see it now in that episode you watched blew out. You probably saw a laptop sitting here, which is now there's no room for because I'm sort of remodeling my desk here and everything because I'm moved all my editing off of my laptop now using the dumpster PC, which is what I've been calling it, which I mentioned a few Q and A's back uh, that I found a, a computer inside of a dumpster here locally. And it was an old gaming rig inside of a box. So it was in pretty good shape and it was protected. And I pulled it out and I tested it. And I've actually been blogging a little bit about this. So if you read my blog, you can find the specifics about this computer. Um, but that's actually what I'm using right now that's operating my editor here right now because it's actually a better computer for editing than what I was using on my laptop. Mostly because it had a Radeon 6990 graphics card in it. And it was one of those older graphics cards that you can utilize through Sony Vegas Pro that actually uses the GPU of the graphics card to aid with not only faster rendering speeds, but also smoother playback and preview, because as you layer effects, it won't jitter as much. You can run it at full resolution, and it looks a lot better than on my laptop. So I have now ported or moved everything over to this desktop PC, which is a gigabyte motherboard with eight gigs of RAM uh, and an Athlon 2 640X processor, I believe it is. Go to the blog for specifics. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can see exactly what I'm using. But it's been really great because I really haven't spent anything on this computer other than I had to put a hard drive in it. And I just pulled my SSD out of my um, laptop and put it in this computer so I have the fast load speeds. And then I just had to put in an operating uh, system. Didn't come with a drive because they pulled them off smartly before they threw it out. And then I put Windows 7 on here, which I can now update to Windows 10 if I want for free. Um, and I'm again going to detail all this stuff as I blog about it. But that's what I'm using right now and I'm really enjoying the faster speed provided by the motherboard, the processor and the GPU on the graphics card, as well as the faster rendering times. And I think it's just a better computer overall for this kind of thing. It's a little bit noisier than my laptop, which concerned me as I'm recording stuff like this. I have the computer running and I actually had to pull the plug on a couple fans because it was so noisy, but I worked through that and I think it's great. And that's what I'm using from now on. So I don't really know what to call it other than the dumpster PC. So that's what I'll keep calling it. Okay, and finally we have the Digital Shooter who says, Googly's gone? Digital Shooter referring to the speaker, the Roland speaker that I used to have black tape over the logo, and then googly eyes that I placed over the black tape, which is now gone now, as you may have noticed, because I've actually moved both my speakers up the top shelf here. When I made my video a while back about using ways to add quarter inch mounts to everything, I've got my old tablet mount back here holding up this Captain America The Winter Soldier DVD, because in the past when I did the Q&A, if you remember, I would be in front of a DVD shelf with lots of DVDs and I could kind of highlight a movie that I liked in the background. And I kind of missed that, you know, I've just had this speaker in the background and it never changed. And so this gives me a chance to add a little variety by putting a movie I like back here. You also might notice uh, this monitor here is bigger because I now have a large four by three monitor that I picked up for a relatively cheap price. And even though when I watch movies on it, it is letterboxed. It's pretty much the same size screen as my widescreen laptop was. Plus I like the ability of having my editor with more vertical space because I can set up my layout here, my timeline much better and make it more efficient and usable. Plus I can watch old uh, TV shows on it without any you know weird stretching or having to squish the the aspect ratio or any of that. And as well as other things, which I'm gonna blog about in the future. But anyway, that's why the googly eyed speaker is gone. Even though it's not really gone, it's just out of sight right here. And stay tuned in the near future for a complete video showing everything I've changed here in the laundry room studio. And that's all the questions we had this week. I'd like to thank everyone who wrote in. And remember, if you'd like your question read on the show, to please send me an email to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com, or you can comment below, or you can send me a message on Twitter at Frugal Filmmaker. I'd like to personally apologize to everyone whom I told there would be a short film on April 29th, which was last month. First, it was gonna be a narrative, then it was gonna be a video tour of kind of the town that I'm living in to show you what kind of filmmaking potential it has. And I failed on both accounts, and I apologize. I was not even able to start either one of those things. And so now I'm back to square one on both of them. Apologize it didn't show up. 
Hopefully what I've been filling the channel with, even though I've had some blank spaces here and there, has been useful with the recent videos. I'm trying to return to a more DIY themed channel and hopefully the videos that I'm providing are you are finding useful. So I thank you all for watching and all of your great comments and all of your great emails of support. Very much appreciated, as well as any uh, constructive criticism you might have. I'm always open to that, how I can make the channel better, what you're more interested in, et cetera, et cetera. At any rate, uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll have a regular video that's coming up uh, later this week, and then another Q&A the following Tuesday. So we'll see you then.